Hello, everyone. Welcome to January 21st Daily Devotional. We're going to be covering Matthew chapter 6, 22 through 27 today. My name is Mike, one of the pastors here at our Hallmark campus, and I'm excited to share with you. But before we get into our passage, I want to share a personal testimony on fasting. Now, fasting has been a key component of my walk with God for a lot of years now, but there's one particular moment that it really stands out as important, and that was just before I got married. Um, As most of you know, I'm happily married to Vanessa May Ramirez, now Fonda Nova. We are super blessed to be uh, celebrating just a little bit more than a year together as a married couple. But prior to our getting married, we really wanted to make sure that God was in it, that He was leading us and that He was guiding us in our relationship decision making. And as I began to develop feelings that I recognized were more than just friends for Vanessa, I really wanted to make sure that God was in the lead, not just my emotions, not just my feelings, but that God was leading the process. And so I decided I was gonna fast. I privately made a decision to fast for 21 days. Over the course of that fast, I felt God give me a lot of confirmations through leadership, through daily Bible study, through conversations with family. And ultimately, one of the coolest confirmations was near the end of my fast, I discovered that Vanessa had been fasting too. We had both been prompted by God at the same time to start a fast on the same day for the same reasons, to make sure that God was first and that we were hearing His voice clearly. And that's one of the amazing benefits of fasting is that God will use a fast to help you tune your ear, to let you see those confirmations a little bit more clearly, to hear him speaking to you more clearly, to give you guidance that you might miss if you're not fasting. And so anytime you're approaching a major life decision like marriage, I think fasting has to be a part of the process. And that's an amazing benefit of fasting. Now, let's look at today's passage, Matthew chapter 6, 22 through 27. Now, before I read this passage, I want to remind you that this comes right on the heels of Jesus talking about money. He's just finished saying that we need to make sure we store our treasures in heaven, not on earth, right? And so he's talking about the topic of money as we get into this. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Now, Of course, the answer to that final question is no. No, Not one bit of worry will add anything to our life. In fact, Philippians 4, 6 through 8 commands us as well not to worry. Don't worry about anything, right? So he's telling us very clearly, be careful about what you think about. You know, Proverbs has something interesting. It says, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as a man thinks, so is he. Right? So what we think about, what we meditate on, what we look at and focus on is ultimately going to end up being where we go. And that's really in the heart of this passage what Jesus is trying to tell us. You know, I want to give one final example as we close today. I've been all over the world. I've traveled to a lot of different countries that are obviously not as blessed as America. Many countries that are impoverished, that have lots of people that are in need. And I'm always amazed when I go to a place like Uganda or Kenya and go into a, play, a village that has mud huts or um, not the modern amenities that most Americans have at the joy that I can find there. You know, I, I recall seeing kids, and I've seen this in lots of different nations, kids playing soccer with joy, with excitement, with a little ball made of trash bags. It's a grocery bags that they just wrapped up, made it into a ball, and they're running through the fields with joy and excitement and not not a care in the world. And of course, as an American, my first thought is, man, that sucks. I wish they had a soccer ball. But those kids are not thinking that. They're not wondering if that soccer ball is coming. They're not They're not concerned about what they're playing with. They're just experiencing the joy and the the life of being a child. And I think that's so beautiful, such a beautiful picture of even what Jesus is saying here. He's like, "You, 
You can be grateful for what God has given. You can experience joy and light and life if you'll focus on the right things and not focus on the wrong, not focus on what you don't have, and not worry about whether things are going to come. And I think that's a really important component for us as we go into today. Remember to be grateful. Remember what Philippians 4, 6 through 8 commands us. Be grateful. Be thankful to God for what he's provided and focus on what you do have, not on what you don't. So thanks for listening to me today, guys. I hope you got something out of this passage and I know you'll get a lot out of it. If you just take some time to dive in and we're looking forward to seeing you guys at our next devotional tomorrow, which is going to be amazing on the next part of Matthew chapter 6.